Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on the Traction channel. Today we head to Japan and the Suzuka circuit for the next instalment in our Assetto Corsa Competizione track guide series. Built in 1962 as a test track for Honda, the venue has developed into one of the world's elite circuits, hosting all kinds of motorsport. It is also the home of iconic corners such as the S-Curves and 130R, all of which are an epic challenge in a GT car. For this episode we have selected the Mercedes as it rides the curbs well and in all honesty is just a very fast car for this particular track and will be hard to beat in races if driven properly. First off, let's show you the analysis before playing you the lap at full speed later on. So heading down the pit straight, you need to position your car all the way over to the left in preparation for turn 1. This corner is kind of two different corners, but the key is to treat them like one, using the first part solely as a braking zone to prepare yourself for the second main part. Start braking as you pass the access road on the left, just before the 50 meter marker. Aim to hit the white line on the inside on the way in, changing down to third gear, and as you pass this apex, roll off the brakes slightly and let the car run out a wee bit, getting back on them hard again once the road straightens. Change down to second and increase your steering lock. For this crucial second section, you want to hit the apex about midway through the corner, using the curb on the inside to do so. As you pass this point, ease back on the power and open up your steering, shifting to third and using all of the exit curb. Pull yourself straight back to the right and shift your attention to the infamous S-curves. This section is all about rhythm, you want to flow from one corner to the next without understeer, and if you do this correctly, the lap time will look after itself. Turn in for the first left-hander, braking slightly on the way in and aiming to hit the curb just at the point where there is a little slither of green runoff area on the inside. In cars such as the Mercedes that ride the curbs well, you can cut even more of this particular corner, even putting two wheels on the grass can work well, but I'd suggest only trying that in qualifying. You should be in roughly the middle of the road as you change direction and fire into the next right-hander, staying in third and dabbing the brakes as you do so. Again, get over the curb at the point where the strip of green runoff area appears on the inside. This corner will push you slightly further out to the left, so just be careful not to apply too much throttle too soon so that you can pull the car back to the right. Change direction immediately for the next left-hander. This one can be the hardest to actually just hit the curb, as it catches you out with how early it comes up. On this lap you can see that I just missed the curb itself, but because my speed was okay and I was able to hug the white line, I didn't lose too much time. If you get your left wheels over that curb in the same way as the previous corners, then do so. Another crucial aspect about the S-Bends is steering lock. On a qualifying lap it's very easy to apply more steering lock to make sure you hit the curbs, but in a race situation this will kill your tyres. It's always worth trying to be a little more patient in races, slowing down slightly more and using less steering lock to avoid understeer, rather than taking the easy option and just chucking on the lock. As you come out of here, again you should be fairly towards the middle of the road, even more so if you hit the previous apex perfectly. Change direction and start trail braking for the long right-hander. Try to put your right wheels on the curb nice and early, and if you can, hug that curb all the way round. If it feels like the car is going to understeer, try shifting down to second. This slight engine braking can help keep the nose in and save you from changing too much about your pedaling pace. Get back on the power slightly more on the exit in order to keep your car over to the right hand side of the road. Short shift back to third and as soon as you get to the white line on the right, start turning left for Dunwall Curve. Lift off the throttle as you head into the corner in order to get the car moving in for the apex. Hit the curb midway through the corner and get back on the power, using any exit curb required. Keep the lock on as you head through the rest of Dunlop, pulling the car fully to the left for the entry to Degna 1. Brake just before the 50 board, shift down to third and roll off the brake, smashing the inside curb with your right front wheel. Get back on the throttle as you do so, carrying the speed all the way out onto the green runoff area on the exit. As long as you keep your right wheels on the curb, this is perfectly legal. Stay out wide and start braking as soon as you straighten your steering. Shift down to second, coming off the runoff area and turning into Degner 2. Roll off the brake as you approach the apex, aiming to hit the inside curb with your right tyres. This can also depend on car setup, so with certain combinations you might need to run round the curb rather than over it. If your speed is right, you should be able to carry the speed out to the runoff area on the exit, easing on the power as you do so. Sacrifice turn 10 in order to fully focus on the hairpin. In fourth gear, turn in and use the curb on the inside, slightly feathering the throttle in order to stay fully over to the right. As soon as the curb ends, get hard on the brakes, straightening the steering and changing down to first. Start turning in reasonably early, following the natural camber and rubber on the road. A common mistake here is impatience, carrying too much speed in and understeering mid-corner. It's super important to get the car slowed down fully and hug the white line through the corner. Do this properly and when you get on the power coming out, you will have lots of grip, allowing you to run out to the exit curb and gain tenths on the run down to spoon curve. This whole section is flat out, so try to cut the corner nice and tightly through the kink to shorten the lap. Run out left towards the overhead banner and come back in tight for the flat out right hand kink, using the curb on the inside. 
This will set you up nicely for breaking into Spoon. Start breaking just before the green entry strip starts, changing down to third. Get turned in and aim to hit the first apex midway through the corner, getting your inside wheel on the stripey curb. Squeeze the power back on through the exit, letting the car run back out towards the right but maintaining some steering lock to keep the car balanced. Before the stripey curb on the right ends, get back on the brakes, shifting down to second. Try to get the car turned in nice and early, because if you try and wait too long before turning in, you will find yourself washing out and losing heaps of time with a big lack of grip. Hug the white line through the middle of the corner, getting on the power as early as you can and opening up the steering. Just watch out for snaps of oversteer like I had here, which are caused by the negative camber. Feel free to abuse the exit curb as usual. Slightly shorten the kink up the hill and then drift right to prepare yourself for the daunting 130R. At the 50 board, dab the brakes and roll into the corner gently in 5th gear. Aim to hit the curb with just the left front wheel and get on the power as early as you can, using lots of exit curb. Just make sure you keep two wheels inside the white line as usual. Ease gently back to the left and start braking just before the 100 board that you can see on both fences. Brake in a straight line, moving out slightly to the left of the road and turning into the chicane just as you pass the bollards on the right. Put two wheels all the way over the green part of the curb. If you get your speed right, you should be able to hold the car to the right as you pass this point, quickly changing direction and getting back on the brakes for the left-hander. Again, put two wheels right up over the curb and get on the power as early as possible, using the exit curb if you need to. This section definitely benefits softer cars like the Mercedes, so you might want to experiment with the curbs. Keep the power on through the last curve and head towards the line to conclude your lap of the Suzuka circuit in Japan. Now let's show you it at full speed and try and give you some context as to how it all flows together. Here is the lap time I set in this video. There's a couple of other reference laps for you as well. AM is the kind of time to aim for when you're first learning the circuit, Pro-AM would probably see you competitive in many online races, and Pro is the kind of lap time you'd expect from an alien in a qualifying session. It's another place like Spa or the Nürburgring where getting into a rhythm can be absolutely crucial, and you can all of a sudden find shed loads of time by getting one corner right, as they usually lead straight into the next. The S-curves are probably the main example of this. You get the entry right and it sets you up to gain time for the next five corners. Get it wrong at the start and you will likely miss 5 apexes, or find yourself scrabbling to get back online. It also really hurts tyres if you push too hard through here, so try to be smooth and steady, limiting your steering angles as I said earlier to as little as you can get away with. Before I leave you, here is my 10 second summary. Control 3 1 and keep it neat tidy for 2, nail the entry to the S curves but don't overdrive them. Get the line right through Dunlop, attack Degna 1 and 2 and use the runoff area. Sacrifice turn 10 and focus on the exit from the hairpin, smooth into spoon and turn in early for the second part. Gentle inputs for 130 yard and attack the curves in the chicane. So that concludes this track guide. Hopefully some of the details will help you find lap time, and if they have, we would love it if you could leave us a like or a comment down below. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the Traction channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when videos are released. Until next time, keep it pinned, thanks and have a great day.